Um, this is uh, the Big Deal Little Joe podcast. I know you haven't been on before. We're fairly new. We resumed We resumed um, filming podcasts this year. We started back in 2021, 22, stopped for quite a bit and decided to come back. And uh, last week was our first episode. And now we're going to air one we had with Martin Fitzwater. I saw you training with Brett and him on yeah. your videos last week. So, and now we have you. So we've had like this all-star lineup, one after another, after another. And um, really the catalyst to, to having you is I, I saw you in Toronto live like because Toronto was it wasn't poorly run I don't want to say that Ron Hatchet is a great guy it just it just kind of got extended a little bit too late so <laughs> you guys were on at like 10 30 11 and everybody left at that point like a lot of people left the show so I was up the, the third row so I saw you like really close and your conditioning even at the night show so I didn't I didn't see you prejudging as well but at the night show your conditioning was still like striated glutes condition full as a house like I mean it was I, I saw your placing and I really thought you might have placed much higher because seeing you in person was like you were the freak in my opinion you were the freak of the show thank you man thank you man yeah I definitely I definitely uh Diff a little bit different with the judging <laughs> in my opinion yeah i saw me higher because i'm a critic of uh i'm a most critical of myself you know i never see me better than other guys when when it's close i'm very uh self-critic you know um but in this show i didn't know, really know what the judges prefer at this show uh when you think they are prefer more physique a better physique okay but in the front of me the guy is really better physique the only one is Quinton. He had a beautiful physique, but we are in open bodybuilding. We need mass, we need conditioning, uh, presentation, and I think my things was, I, I was complete in this show. I, I was so dry, I was grainy, I had a, the most mass on stage. I really didn't know, but it's a tasting from the judges, you know, you can only give your best and can hope the judges prefer you. Yeah, you you did definitely have that freak factor, because um, I know like, uh, there were some years, finishing was always something that I liked to bring and like when you, when you see that in someone else that you know it's something you appreciate in yourself it's even more so but you're like you have like 60 70 pounds of tissue on me so it's it's different because i see that in someone with so much tissue and you know i've seen some striated glutes in my pictures but then i saw you in person and i was like shit never compete with that and your chest too like the striations the cross striations like it was really cool to watch the graininess and just the grainy skin and all the striations coming to light under that stage lighting and you were the only one and yeah yeah, when you were talking about the guy ahead of you, I think you were talking about fourth place, were you? Or fifth place? Fifth. Well, you, yeah, Wait, you yeah. were fifth, right? You were fifth. Yeah, I was fifth. Yeah. So fourth, but no, no, but the guy you were, you were, were you saying the guy in front of you didn't really have like the most beautiful aesthetic either. I didn't like to to talk a lot too much about my components, you know, because uh, it's I'm a sportsman. I always respect some guys, but uh, yeah, the guy in front of me, he was not complete uh, he was definitely in shape he was good but uh yeah i think he has one or two uh bicep rupture the the abs was uh wider you know and yeah for me was not a uh, Better than Are me, you, you know. I, no, no, no. I see what you mean totally, and I'm not. Um, yeah, and that individual, he was a Canadian. Um, he's a good, he's a good bodybuilder, actually. Um, someone I know very well, and a really good guy. I mean, yeah. Seeing the lineup, I even think John. This is my subjective opinion. I don't know if he should have been third either. Like you're right, it was apples and oranges, and I'm not a judge either. But judging that show must have been very difficult because then you had Akeem, who you're more similar to Akeem, but with more freak factor in your conditioning, and then you had a guy like um. Win Quinton is more aesthetic but very big and he came in well like I it was it was a hard show to try. oh and then of course Hassan which was that is, a... that is what I talked uh, earlier I didn't know actually what they prefer you know Quinton is very beautiful and Akeem yeah he is an Olympian guy he's a champion but the conditioning in back and glute and hams was not on point he has definitely some poses his strengths the side poses he have deep cuts in your in his squats and all uh, but uh, when you judge all poses, pose from pose to pose, uh, he definitely not win all poses. I understood what they are really prefer when they prefer more aesthetic. Quinton has but must be win when when they prefer freak factor. <laughs> it's like more more me than I, I yeah. was grainy and full and mass and I had I have 
have both Rainy and Freak Factor and yeah, Akeem. And size. The, the, and size. The good, th the good thing is that you saw the show in personally, in life, because when you only judge the pictures in the internet or the live stream, it's the worst thing for me. It's always the same. I look in pictures and in live stream and also things, I look 20% more bad. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It's true. And some, th some other guys, they have a little bit more aesthetic or more roundness, more deeper roundness muscles, deeper abs and deeper, you know what I mean? They are looks often in, in the pictures 20% better, you know? It's true because you look at Dorian. I was watching this video. Somebody made a documentary on Dorian. I think it was just somebody put something together. It wasn't a, fo a formal documentary, but it was on YouTube and I was watching it and they were talking about, you know, all the years of Dorian's competition and they had the footage and I was watching Dorian uh, 90, what was it? 92, 93, 94. And, you know, when he brought really good conditioning and I'm looking at the pictures and it's shit quality. And I'm like, you don't look anything more conditioned than anyone else. It's because you're not there. You can't see the graininess. You can't see it. And back then it wasn't even 4K cameras. It was VHS, you know? <laughs> it's a good but, example. Dorian has more back and he was a great bodybuilder. I'm not so good like bot like Dorian. Uh, I would not uh, compare me with Dorian, but Dorian and me, we have a similar structure, similar things. He had not the ball best physique, but he was grainy and so hard and every body parts. And uh, Dorian thinks it's the same. It's similar. When you see, when you saw at the 90s, I was too young for this time, but when you saw him uh, in person, it was a complete different, uh, like pictures. When I had my first coach, I only said the pictures for checks and uh, then I took a picture in the morning and we saw us in the afternoon and personally and I sent uh, the pictures in the morning and he told me in the afternoon hey, the pictures was not from today so yes yes it's my worst thing I even looks like 20% bad at pictures <laughs> you, people don't look as lean you don't see the the graininess of the dick skin like yeah what's funny is if you apply um, filter on those pictures which sounds like you're cheating but I think it actually replicates more of the reality that you're actually looking like and it's weird because people would think well a filter well that's cheating that's bullshit but i think it's just the cameras dull people up especially the new cell phone cameras but anyways um so yeah no i totally agree with you tim i mean that toronto was really hard to judge no you you were there for toronto what do you did um yeah i was i was there but i didn't see the i didn't see the pro show because i left before the pro show but i saw the like even just from the i saw the pictures and videos that were posted and i got one like well i have one up here like i found it on instagram on the toronto pro page i wonder if i can share it but uh maybe i can make host you should be able to now and while, while you're looking for it uh tim do you remember competing with joe with, with, with where arnold's i guess you guys competed at the arnold's together really yeah we did in 2021 <laughs> ah, okay I didn't know. The Arnold's uh, UK. Yeah, Arnold's UK, yeah. Oh, it was my worst shape at all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you were a little bit off, I think, because, like, you definitely... Yeah, actually, actually, I'm always in shape, and in my whole career... Well, we have this opportunity. Um, guys, uh, well, Tim's frozen. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing to our channel. If you have, if you haven't, please subscribe. Um, we, we really haven't done this formal chat, but guys, we've sent this, this, uh, this podcast out there. Uh, we sent the last, sorry, the last podcast out. Um, please do share with your friends. Our first podcast had like an all-star lineup, uh, right away. It almost got, you know, uh, 10 K we'd like to get these podcasts really rolling. Not just, uh, we, you know, we're not in it for the money, monetary stuff, but we do, uh, we, we we want to be true to our fans and we want to keep developing getting better videos oh okay so so tim fell off let's see if he's coming back i'm sure he will well yeah, There's I just to show the, yeah the top five because like no sorry that's at, a key even that's when Quentin. you look at these pictures here and you look Robin. at him on the outside you're like you could easily see the debate for him being higher yeah john's legs are looking really good there i mean it's john's legs are good but like tim's legs are fucking crazy you know what i mean like look at them you've got it you've really got it like you would have had to see the whole thing that's and you know like i know they can't yeah, judge for sure yeah when he saw it live it was something it was something different i mean um and i see what he was saying about some of the other competitors you know it, it's hard because um robin's obviously a mass monster too um you know structurally he's right like he doesn't have quittance kind of appeal in terms of aesthetic so robin oh, was placed fourth and john was placed third and a team was first which you know like when i look at this lineup I, I don't i don't know if i agree with any of the places but you know i just 
I feel like I feel like top two, like if you go by top two, it's like, yeah, you can see the, you know, if they're going by like just shape on that front pose, then I guess that's why they pick top two. But then after that, it's like, you know, the three to five, I feel like you could easily switch that around. Cause like looking at Tim compared to John and Robin, I'm like, Tim just has more of that like freak factor. And like those guys, you know, like they're more of like the, I would say more mass type guys, but I still feel like Tim's freak factor is a lot more apparent. Like, yeah, I, I would have maybe done, uh, you, you know, honestly, I like Quinn. And the conditioning, first, but... like look at his condition, even in the pictures, man, his conditioning looks pretty crazy. Like even though these are low quality pictures, but like conditioning is pretty yeah. crazy, man. I mean, say they would have kept top two the same. I, I think done. like, cause just based on like, that's just what I think. I feel like they picked top two based because I know the, the head judge was, uh, what's her face? Becky from the Tammy States. Tammy Beckers. No, not Tammy Beckers. Her name is Becky something. She's from the States. Um, yeah. Oh, and she, Tammy uh, Beckers. She, she loves like picking the call. Like she picks people like based on their front shots a lot, like especially front double. Um, So I know she likes like that nice front double with like a tiny waist kind of thing. So I feel like that's why she went with like Quinton and Akeem in the top two, because they have that like very much, very streamlined look in the front, especially Quinton. Um, and then I feel like the next three guys that obviously like they're not as like, you know, tiny, they're more like mass, more of a massive, like mass monster type look. But like then when you look at the next three, you're like, okay, like you factor in like conditioning, fullness and, and everything else. It's like, I don't know. I could see like from what I saw, like I would have Tim like probably more up in like third and then I'd have, you know, probably John fourth, Robin fifth. But yeah. that's just how I see it. But what I understand is uh, what I understood is how so much judges concentrate so much of the waist. We are an open bodybuilding. Yeah, you act, you you don't looks like a block. It's good. Yeah. But my waist is not very, very bad or worse. It's it's okay. It, it could be better. But even show uh, uh, on any shows told me the guys, yeah, he had a better waist. Okay. Yeah, they had a better waist, but we are an open bodybuilding. Yeah. What is with a mass and cranny look when you turn around and have stripes on your ass, on your back, in your chest? What is about that? Yeah, we you, have you, cross you, can, you, you, you couldn't only talk a lot or too much. Yeah, he had a better waist. Yeah, okay. We are button eating on bodybuilding. That is what, what I understood that even the waist is so important things. I feel like it should be more about like the because like I, I know I got dinged for it before. It was more so like being able to control your midsection between poses, not like yeah. I feel like if your waist is your hips are a bit wider, that's just a genetic thing. But like if your hips are that wide, like where it makes your taper look bad, like your you still have a taper on your front double and everything so i don't and you still have more of an x frame to your front double and things like that so i don't think yeah. the wider waist should hinder somebody unless they have like really bad control of their stomach you know like their distension things like that but like a wider waist like doesn't really take away from a physique especially in open bodybuilding when it's like everybody wants to see big freaky guys they don't want to see like just a classic physique you know because they have a category yeah. now so you know it's yeah exactly that, they have their own category and and you last know year I, last year i took some shows in only in the in europe and there uh, was the same one similar I was crazy hard and full I had the most mass and uh, a guy of uh, more aesthetic was in front of me maybe yeah he had the same conditioning a little, little bit worse but but uh, a little bit better structure and the judges told me after the, the show I I never even asked judges about the meaning uh, I only asked the judges when the conversation is possible I not go to the judges you know mm -hmm. and the judges in in Europe last year told me, yeah, today we judged more more physique. Okay, don't understand. In open bodybuilding. Yeah, I mean, it's it goes back to like the Nick Walker, the Nick Walker Martin battle in New York. Tim, you were there in New York. You you played seventh, yeah. right, in New York. Yeah. Which you look good in New York too. Uh, I didn't see yeah. him in person, but um, yeah. it was that battle again. I mean, Nick beat. Martin, not by much, but in my opinion, Martin was much more streamlined. In that case, um, Martin was more conditioned, though. In more, they might have been equally as conditioned. I wasn't there, but Mm, there's an argument to be made there. So that's a different story. That's not apples. That's apples and oranges, but the oranges might be a little bit better on that day. That's fine. But if it's not the case, then I, I think, you know, the way shouldn't be such an issue. And I agree, Joe, it's about control. Now, if it was classic, it'd be the other way around. Uh, I don't know, Tim, if you saw the guy backstage who won classic. So classic, we had our Canadian guy, uh, Blake, Blake Course. And Blake's got a, a very nice physique, uh, very conditioned. But the guy who beat him had the tiniest waist i had ever seen did you see these guys yeah yeah i mean so that's different because that's classic 
And 100% agreed that in classic, the guy who wins should have the better flow, the smaller waist, the better aesthetics. I agree 100%. And that's why we have classic. But we have, we are in open bodybuilding right now. And then we have a lot of more points than the physiques and the waist. We have uh, important things like definitely control your midsection. It's, it's a point what I practice right now every every day. I, yeah. I can be better. I could it better to, uh, to do better on stage. When I turn, I'm not breathing too much that my belly goes out that i control my midsection it's uh, i practice this right now but what is with conditioning with cranny and with mass on stage anyways uh, you know we, we could argue this and i agree it was like cedric mcmillan he, he was a nice aesthetic never came in as conditioned as he could have and that's why cedric never other than the arnold won a really quality show and cedric was don't get me wrong i'm not being biased cedric was one of my favorite physiques it's just if he could have just dialed it in you know, story could have been different yeah I'm but sure. we can speak a lot about about the shows ago but it's a go we can we can change it we can yeah. speak about that uh, we can speak a week about that but we can't change it only thing what i can do is to do my best to practice more my weaknesses my breathing my midsection control to bring my shape 100 back on stage at the next show and i'm really looking forward to to compete in vancouver in four weeks and uh, i do my best and hope the judges uh, compare or judges a little bit different like Toronto points tim how close are you uh to uh olympia there's no points anymore you have to win yeah there's no points anymore no they yeah, don't only the win only yeah, the win it's just a win now i know i know robin's doing vancouver i'm not sure who else is doing vancouver though okay. do you know we'll get where, it, where is judging in vancouver um it'll probably be it'll have to be an international judge as the head judge so it won't be a canadian judge it'd probably be it might be the same i don't know if it's the same lady or they might have uh because i know she sometimes does vancouver becky sometimes has done vancouver so it might be her again oh no no. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust you know, me. You know, <laughs> she judged me. Like, I remember I did Vancouver like way back and I got judged by her. And same thing. Like, she liked the guy with the smaller waist over me because I'm more like, G and Tim are more similar in that sense. Like, more of a mass monster physique, not as classic. But, like, depending on the head, judge me. It's the difference, you know. Becky judged me last year in France. It was the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny. What, it's what, funny what, when you hear it. Yeah. What, what, uh, I'm sure I could find what, like who's judging. I could ask because I'm curious. I'm what, curious who's going to judge. What was me. different for me? or dif difficult for me on stage they called my number and i still staying in the in the center and then she called the the other numbers stood me in the and on the left side on the outside and then who we are compared she never looks to me never no she only looks in the, in the top three no that doesn't look to me I, I i was so irritated because i i probably like do my best in every single pose and i had definitely have poses where i uh, could win my side chest my most muscular uh, are definitely better than the other guys, but that, that doesn't look to me. No, it's the worst. It's funny. I was just going to say, it's funny that we all have the same, like, I mean, I'm not on pro level, but there are judges that I know. I had Steve Weinberger judge me once at uh, the Arnold Amateur, but that was enough time, stage time, and I had to torn tricep. But I mean, I know the names that aren't going to go well. When I hear the head judge, and you go into that show, and you're like, ah, oh, man, that head <laughs> judge just does not like my physique. It's the worst. So, but don't worry about yeah, it. It's, it's bodybuilding you take it easy do your best and then when you do, do the different place place what you what you even what you actually like to do after the show you you need one or two two days to realize that and then you go back on track and give your best all the the only thing what you can do yeah last year i took my first show in italy eight place and one week later back by back to back i was a little bit better but i don't change my my my, uh, conditioning too much um, but I in one week and another head judge I took a third place and it was close to first and once you know what I mean the eighth place I go I was not a, not in the first call out I was by sight and one week later and the other head coach he liked my physique and my condition my body better more and then I took a, th a third place <laughs> that's bodybuilding <laughs> you never it's, it's almost yeah, like or, or the, the same one was uh, Emir from Germany it's a German guy he took this 10 or 11 place 10th or 11 place in new york and took the second place one week later in la yeah that's, you never was know year or was that last year this year really oh yeah, yeah. Emil like when, you, when you place what 
Tim, what were you saying? This year, Emir from Germany, 10th place at Europe Pro, and one week later, back to back, he took it second place. Yeah. You, when you move up like five places and six places in, in two weeks, you gotta beg. It begs the question, especially when there's like a similar panel of judges. It's like, how did that happen? If your conditioning is slightly better, whatever it may be, it's like. I think what I think what happens sometimes too is like some of those bigger shows like New York, when they recognize guys more, like the guys like Nick Walker, Martin, you know, uh, who else yeah. is on there? Tonio, like they recognize those guys because like they're from the States, right? So I feel like even if there's other guys that are comparable, it's like they don't even look at them as much because they don't recognize them the same because they're from, you know, they're from Europe or somewhere else. They could be from Canada, whatever. And I feel like they don't get the same chance to jump in the mix until they, I don't know, until they've been on like the American scene more. Like, I don't know how many shows you've done in the in the States, Tim, but like, I feel like they make those guys, like they want them to do more shows in the States before they give them better recognition. It's a weird thing, but like that's what I see happening sometimes is like they want guys to almost like pay their dues. Did he just buzz out again? <laughs> yeah. You must have a poor connection. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's true. Like and and I think you experience that too a little bit. Well, yeah. I like, mean I felt that because like New York last year was the first time that I did a stateside show and got top five. Because every other time I did a show over there, I was getting like sixth place every time. And then like Yeah, in proximity, like, you're really close to New York, right? Like, I mean, you're recognized. You're well, probably I think, more because I, I came in so good. Like I came in really good and there was that that's what kind of helped me uh you know get those comparisons that too. that too yeah but even still like when the guys are close i feel like when it's close they just like they go more with who they know rather than you know if someone else could potentially beat them you know like if there's a if it was like nick and tim they're probably gonna pick nick just because nick's like the more popular one in like north america you know what i mean like yeah or like Stu, Stu and tim or Stu. like i think like i honestly yeah, think, I think way tim, way off tim's more impressive than Stu by by a long shot but that's just my opinion i i yeah, yeah this year well, I, I gotta preface everything by saying I wasn't there, but I mean, I don't think Stu found his his peak yet. No, I think he looked the same, the same or worse than last year, to be honest. Because like I competed against him last year, and I don't think he was any better. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know what what my internet here happened. <laughs> no, no, it's okay, Tim. But it, it happens. I, 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 it's 2025, and we still can't get uh, quality internet. You know, it's but but while you, you, like you go to Walmart and you pay seven or eight dollars for milk or twenty dollars for steak now. <laughs> <laughs> How is Florida? How is Florida at prices? How are you over there? You're just staying there, right? You're in Germany the whole time. Now I'm here in, in Florida and in Tampa for okay. the next four weeks. Uh, I have friends from Germany that are living here for, for a long time and I was here to competing at Tampa Pro uh, 2022, first time. And uh, since like that, they are told me, hey, they are like me and you can come back whenever, even you want, whenever you want. And it's it's nice to be here. They are hospi hospitality me and uh and I, i'm a part of the family i'm here for for the next four weeks until the vancouver show okay okay but where's where's home home is that germany like are you you live in germany yeah both? i live in germany middle of germany we're in germany I'm, I'm curious it's near frankfurt but i live in a small village i'm a country boy in germany okay. you know? <laughs> my best friend is a butter and and i'm a, i'm a, a hobby farmer and a hunter i i love the rest uh, or and the uh, nature you know so is anyone taking Taking care of your chickens right now or something or your yeah i i shoot it by myself my my food yeah I yeah do you that's a, good a, <laughs> organic a deer i handing a deer the best quality you know oh no way yeah that's good <laughs> yeah you talk about uh news. Stu, and i saw today or, or yesterday that uh Stu and i we have a rival <laughs> he also like to compete in in vancouver he's gonna do oh. yeah yesterday or three days ago i don't know uh, don't know uh, exactly he he posted that he uh, he liked to compete in Vancouver. <laughs> so he wants to come up. Who's in Vancouver right now? Robin? Robin. Robin Glenn. Glenn. I think Robin's doing it. I know that. Yeah. Robin's yeah. Doing it, but, uh, I don't know. But I don't know anybody don't else. Know. Like he said, Stu. I know you said Stu, but like, I don't know anybody that's like a, like a top Olympian or anybody like that. You know, I don't, I haven't heard anybody like really big name that's doing it. I, well, I, I only, I only know is uh, Hassan is coming there and John is coming there. Uh, Quinton, he, he don't know exactly if if he come and Stu is coming there and me and that that's it i don't know where 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 it's also not come vancouver's like the other side of the world for us so we might as well go to florida it would be easier for joe and i to go to florida than to go to vancouver so we come see you again yeah with vancouver we have to take a plane and it's very far away actually vancouver so yeah i mean or we come see you for sure vancouver and uh one week later back to back is chicago are you gonna do chicago 
Chicago? Yes, sir. Oh, I might uh, that or road trip to Chicago. We yeah. gotta get pizza. I know you don't do their pizza. Deep dish <laughs> pizza over there. After the Arnold, I, I, I went to Chicago. I'm down for a road trip. I never do it too. The last time I was was competing in, in Chicago, we go to eat the, the typical Chicago pizza with triple cheese. Early, and yeah. then my stomach was so worse. I have the whole day stomach problems and it was too much fat for me. Yeah, it is. It, it's it's hard eating those fats post show, especially when you're like ultra lean. I know, and you've been dieting off such clean food and your carb up is fairly good. And then you start eating the greasy food. Like it just sits there. And the edema too. I don't know if you get a little bit of edema, but if you eat a lot of greasy, sugary, salty food and the pizza, the, the, um, the tomato sauce is full of salt. So you wake up the next day and you're not feeling well and you're you're dehydrated. Yeah, yeah not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I doesn't like to eat shit after my workout. I eat, I like to eat more fruits, do me a, a porridge like fruits and a little bit dark chocolate and all the things. Or I eat a steak with uh, a salad with real dressing, you know, not uh, low calorie or oil and balsamico. I like is a huge cup of uh, salad with a real dressing and crunchies. That is the thing what I what I like after the competition and uh, no no shit. Really no no chocolate, no cake, nothing. Mm. Yeah, one well, chocolate, one cake is good, but no yeah. too much burgers, too much pizza. Yeah. I doesn't like it. You feel you're great when you eat it and after that you feel you bad, you have too much water the next day you feel bad and I like it more when you eat or you can enjoy your eat your food and you can enjoy the whole day and not only the the time that you eat <laughs> doing your eating. I wouldn't want to be Tim's size with water or Joe or your size with water. Tim, what did you weigh this year at the show if you don't mind me asking? Because you were like you looked like one of the mass monsters, mass monsters. <laughs> Thanks, man. I uh two sixty pounds I think. It's one hundred nineteen not one hundred twenty kilogram yeah, on stage, yeah. one hundred seventeen. It's like around two sixty. Pretty heavy. Okay. On stage yeah. or or when you weigh in. There's no way in. For pro? There's no way in. No way ins for open. Yeah. It, the first time we had a way in, in, in New York. <laughs> really? They weighed you in? Yeah. Yeah. I never do it before. But uh they uh I was at a registration and he told me, Hey, uh step off the skill. Okay, why? <laughs> I thought he was in men's physique. <laughs> I'm I'm a, no, yeah, yeah. Do you think you, you must have thought you were two twelve or something? That's funny. Uh I'm an open bodybuilder. No, no, all guys go on go on the scale. Okay, when you wish when you want, and I go to the scale. And, oh, okay, congratulations. You're the second heaviest guy today. <laughs> 260. Joe, what are you around, Joe? What are you, 260 as well? Um, la last year, like, my, when I did New York, I was 268. But I'm a, I'm a bit taller than Tim. I'm like 5'10". Five, five, good, good. Mm -hmm. he, he, Joe, Joe's a big guy. He's probably one of the biggest pros I've seen. I mean, we, we've all seen most of the pros. And some of the pros are smaller than they look. And some of the pros in person are, are massive. But it, it was, it doesn't was my plan to get heavier. I had weak weaknesses and I, or actually I want to to improve my weaknesses and no go go heavier uh, at all um, but the off season works so good we changed after last competition the, the my workout system I trained uh, for a few weeks with a lot of reps it's more for for blood pressure in in the yeah. muscles to flow your muscles with blood and it was a very very great experience I even trained heavier after my competition in the rebound fast you know in the because i enjoy it that i have my strengths back when, when you're in diet you have not too much strength yet you know you do your pump workout and deload workout and what all the things and then i eat more food and i enjoy actually that i have my strengths but my coach told me no right now we do 10 weeks with more reps like 15 20 25 reps even in exercise and at first i i, I think oh no i hate it to the pump workout but but the pain in this workout with so much reps was so, so much. It was crazy. And then uh, I do it in my recovery and the recovery works very good. Go out with my gear, you know, and do the blood flow workout. And then I I start with my off season. And uh, that is what I love about bodybuilding. The, so consequently, you are that the better is your your summary, you know, your... your Herman's hard to train translate because they have like a super complex language <laughs> it's so complicated ah your result your result okay yeah, yeah yeah. you know what i would like to say uh how how uh constantly you are mm -hmm. that you better are your results yeah and my last off season i take it like
like a prep only with much calories earlier when i'm in off season oh, okay it's fine yeah i go one day go food outside or okay i yeah. skip one meal it's not a problem i have enough me enough meals and in the day i not eat my pre workout meal on on point in time and the last off season or the last two off seasons i think so okay i'm 33 i have not a long time right now i like to get uh, to take the time what i have so good if i can and because there i give my best in my off season also not only in prep and my off season was was similar like a prep only with much calories and that's the thing how i growing up so good yeah you know yeah that's key to, that, to is, good body. that is what what i love in bodybuilding when you cheat you work out your meal or all the things you only cheat yourself you know and you, you get what you put into bodybuilding it's true like i mean if you want to be successful I, I think the difference people often ask what's the difference between an amateur and a pro and you know the pros are just willing to put the time in the effort in all their meals eat their meals consistently go to the gym consistently do the things that work consistently and just that's what the difference is it's not a shit ton of gear it's not a special formula it's that consistency piece that you know separates the gym rat from the competitive bodybuilder from the amateur bodybuilder to the national bodybuilder and at the, the upper you know side of things the pro and then the really really good pros you know who have probably cooks or <laughs> other well no it's true but your lifestyle has a lot to do with it like if you don't have to go to work or train clients you're gonna be more able to put those steps in place the consistency or buy your meals because you have you know a shit ton of money it's just like if you have that privilege then it's going to be easier to get closer to being a really good pro yeah and the important thing is the mindset you know in your mindset when you think okay i do bodybuilding and uh, only consistently in my prep then you have less results when you think okay i even give my best in all time in my recovery all time of the year it's oh, tim's dropped off again yeah i mean i think that's the difference between the good years even even amateurs or even pros like the, the years where you're consistent are always going to be your best years are you dropping off too oh no i thought you were frozen this is drinking water i remember that year and i hate to, to talk about my experience but i can just think about those like the year i was working with you joe and i think before that was the lockdown and i always had a pot of rice on and chicken breasts so it was always the same shit every day and i was actually weighing it out and then i started working with you and it was very much like the diet i was eating for seven months before that and then i was really on point with your diet up until prep where i fell off a couple times because you know <laughs> you knew i wasn't listening to you the funny thing about joe guys if, if you're one of his Clients, he probably won't call you out on shit, but it's not his job. I won't, or maybe I won't even always call you out, but I always can tell. <laughs> no, no, you could tell. This is a funny thing because, like, you didn't call me quite out, but you're like, yeah, whatever, man. Okay, get back to your diet. Like, you, you <laughs> indirectly called me out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and you, you knew. I do it anyway. I know you knew. But I know because I dropped 10 pounds. He's like, you dropped 10 pounds in a week. He's like, did you drop your diet? I'm like, nah. Yeah. He's like, get back to your diet. And just... <laughs> so then I think I had, I went back to my like 600 grams of carbs and I blew loaded like a motherfucker for like four days and it was good it was good to have you there those years we were just talking about joe when when he coached me for a couple of years actually when i turned 40 i went back to joe I, I tried to do my own thing for two years and fucked up and i went back to joe for coaching like so he could keep me accountable and uh yeah good results when you're always consistent and someone's there to keep you accountable yeah it makes so a tim big... you made it but... oh, i said it just makes it makes a big difference the accountability aspect because like i had lots of a lot of preps where i like i prep myself like i i coached me like prep myself to turn pro and everything but like i just for me it's just the like having somebody else just like dial you in for shows and just like oversee things this makes a big difference it makes it easier for me because like you know i work with a lot of clients so when it comes to my own nutrition and training and everything it's just easier for someone else to be like just do this you know and that's why like i still work with the coach too because it makes it easier i'm sure tim's the same way like it's way easier if you have somebody else kind of overseeing things than to try and nitpick it yourself yeah i prepped myself also for, for a couple of years you, you you're not prepping yourself anymore more though uh, so right now i have a coach since like two years but uh the good thing is my coach is a friend of mine he's from germany manuel bauer and he he, he was a coach from ronnie rockle uh, who okay. are in top six of mr olympia mm. and um he is a little bit undercover coach you know he had not a lot of popular athletes but uh the, the good thing is uh, he is a friend of mine and we work together and i have sometimes had, had a problem with when i have a coach and 
he only told me what I must do and I follow him uh, blind, you know? Yeah, you want you want some of your input sometimes. Yeah, I, I like it more when I work with my coach together. My nutrition, I do it by myself and sometimes I ask him, hey, I'm 200 carbs, 250 carbs, what do you think? Uh, or w when it's, when, when the progress is not, doesn't work, he told me exactly what I must do and I know when I must follow him and I know when we can do it together you know yeah, yeah. now I think that's you need that feedback loop. Um, so aside from coaching you're going into this show um, talking about coaching are you doing any special peaking techniques anything crazy I love talking about peaking. any secrets or manipulations or nothing at all are you just gonna chill keep your diet the same post into the show any plans yeah the peak the peak things are very very different someone needs much carbs or, or needed to get empty with carbs to go slow carb and then carb up for me it's better when i do it more consistently when i when i cut my carbs a little bit for in, in the peak week and then mm -hmm. i go i i decide from day to day what the weight is going on what my shape is going on and then i go two days in front of the show or three days in front of the show slowly up with the carbs uh, uh, and one or two day I eat a little bit more fats because fats make you full your muscle full but not too much too full you cannot over overload with fats mm -hmm. and for me it's the best thing to change no, not too much not uh, too less carbs and then carb up for two days and 1000 carbs for me it's worse than I do it Daddy. I had a lot of shows with my other coach a huge fan of carb up and even I looks like three days out four days out uh, it was also the thing in UK four days out I looked so peeled I looked so good and uh, at the show I was overload I was watering yeah watering and the problem is when you have not the best physique the best structure and when you live off your conditioning then you're leaving your joker you know yeah you, like you play cards you're, yeah you're taking away your best card yeah I take away it's my best card you're yeah. taking the wild card yeah, yeah I got you you'll fuck up your conditioning to risk and the more next, size and the, bonus. the next thing is I have not so deep apps it's my weakness i try to get to improve that it's a little bit more uh, genetics to have deep apps and when you have deeper apps and rounder muscles it's not a problem when you have when, when you failed your shape of five percent when you have a little bit water inside or also things it's not a problem but when you had flat apps and you have a little bit water and your apps it's the first thing what the judges show when you go on stage you know and when it's not lean when it's not in shape because of water and um, then you looked to full you know you look bad you look worse yeah. and for me it's every single time important that i'm 100 percent in shape i can go on stage when i'm a little bit flat it's not a problem more important is that i am grainy so you're gonna keep pretty much your carbs consistent up until vancouver lower them a bit then bring them up a little bit near the end fly in i guess to vancouver a couple days early load up on a little bit of carbs hit the stage that's about it Sounds i like do it plan. in vancouver i do it similar like in toronto i think it was my best shape more yeah i can't do more i i do the the same things and another thing what i learned right now is is not to pump too much uh, backstage because I have so muscle quality and when I pump too much my muscles goes close and you blurs can't blurs see my, my worser yeah blurs the, blurs the striation yeah yeah and you see my I'm full then I'm full but you can't see my structure my cuts too, uh, too good uh, for me it's better when I'm posing some rounds backstage only yeah. stay for the mirror and posing some rounds uh, squeeze your ass squeeze your your hams squeeze your legs and posing 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 three five six rounds posing and then you pump a little bit because you're staying backstage for a long time in the most and that's important for me earlier i i pumped too much i i pumped for 40 minutes pump up pump up but for me it's it's not good i think that's a problem you see these guys backstage and then they, they call your class maybe it's not the same at pro shows but i'm sure this happens they call your class they tell you to pump up it's like 20 minutes before you're hitting the stage you're pumping up deflated by that point you get all the blood in the muscle and then you see guys who are pumping up and they're, they're just going to town they're doing a full-blown workout and i'm looking at them and it's like they're young now that i compete older i like last show i did i didn't even pump up i'm, I'm in my 40s now my my almost my mid 40s it's like i'm looking at the kids waste all their energy i'm like you're gonna be on that stage for maybe you know 
10, 20 minutes. You really want to waste all your energy on push-ups and, you know, uh, cables. And I remember, Joe, you gave me that advice too. Like the first time we uh, worked together a long time, we don't pump up too much. I've had, I had shows where I didn't even pump up. I just walked out and started posing and things started, those are best. things come alive as you start to hit poses. I find that works better for me. Like if I do a pump up, it's like very minimal. And then I find like, as I start to hit a few poses, like things come to life. So cause if I pump I up you. too long, I just flatten out like crazy. So I can't, I can't pump up for more than a few minutes before I go out there. Yeah, it never goes flat, but I try so, so much things because on stage, I even get better from posing round to posing round. And in the third posing round, I'm so cranny hard and full and all the things. And I, I never guess or I never think, what, what should I do that I have the, the shape uh, from the third posing round in the first posing round? Mm -hmm. And I, I try to pump less. I try to pump more, but nothing was the best. And then my coach told me, hey, this time we are pump nothing a little bit but we post some round hey when you when you're backstage you have you didn't like to post so much it's oh you you are tired you know you, you stay you're laying on backstage for a couple hours and then when when your coach sold posing five rounds oh man but uh it's the best thing for me i agree it brings out the striations it doesn't like i agree like there's a story acido tells about rami and he said when you pump up rami within seconds he gets all blurry like everything on him he's already so mass he's got so much mass that once you start pumping him up forget it it's too late like he loses all of his lines and i can yeah. see that i can really see rami lose all his lines okay we are about an hour and 14 minutes and i've got to ask you about germany here um or german bodybuilders him because um i think you know what if you were to ask me who my favorite bodybuilder growing up was it would have had to be marcus rule um back when i think i was in my early 20s you know teens and i'd see marcus rule it would be like this fucking freak show with the shoulders and you know you're smoking the cigarettes and going to walmart and everybody was looking at him or where <laughs> that grocery store was i uh, was such a fucking freak and i actually met marcus rule when i was really young um like in my early early 20s and he came through the doors and they opened two doors for him uh yeah he was uh, he was wearing a football jersey and i, wow, I don't think i ever seen a guy with shoulders like that because with the yeah he was so huge um wasn't he was pretty grumpy that day i'll give him that but i think he didn't, normally he was a good fun guy um but he was he looked tired so, so was Ronnie Coleman when I saw him so in Ottawa for the first time I think he, the supplement company is really burn you guys out um, but yeah so Marcus Rule and um, I would have to say Dennis Wolf I was a big fan of too so I love German bodybuilders in terms of physique aesthetic I think Dennis Wolf should have won he should have he came really close this one at Olympia I, I forgot which year it was but I was I was hoping he would have you know won that Olympia just on his conditioning alone I forgot you guys know the year where he came in so tight so crisp like 2007 maybe yeah and there was the Phil controversy. He was pretty close. I thought he was, I think he was third of that or fourth that year. 2008, maybe. No, Anyways. 2015, maybe. He was, he was fourth. So who, I mean, I should ask, aside from German bodybuilders, who are your favorite bodybuilders, Tim? Thank you, Frozen. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was just thinking about it. He was like, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna say Phil Heath, aren't you? Like favorite? Um, yeah. honestly, like my when I was like my first favorite when I was a kid, the first one I saw in the magazines that was like I was like made me want to get into bodybuilding was Lee Priest, and then I would yeah. say after that, like after seeing Lee Priest, then it was Jay Cutler. Um, and then I'd say more recently, yeah, like I'd say more recently, just like when it comes to like not just physique but just like mentality and like everything around, like Phil Heath for sure. Um, definitely. was it weird having a uh, Lee on the podcast last week i know it was weird for me it was like i grew up it wasn't weird it was i was like, just surprised you wanted to do it because i'm like we're like fucking nobody and like he fucking went on the podcast with us i was like okay cool like, i know i know and he's like but that's what i mean is it weird like it was for me it was weird because he's like one of my eyes he was up there i was watching i was watching yeah, like videos. for sure man like when i was like 14 yeah. like 14 years old and like you know looking at my older brother's bodybuilding magazines like and looking at him i was just like man like this guy's a what are the dudes yeah like lee priest is a fucking freak and i was just like I remember seeing him when he was a teenager and I'm like man I want to get like that by the time I'm like 17 <laughs> you know genetics genetics definitely aren't at that, that level but you know what I mean like he was 
He's a freak of nature. We had Sorry, Lee Priest I, on the I show. Really, I really That's okay, Tim. What, don't worry about it. No explanation what needed. Said. What was your question? Who's your favorite bodybuilder? I didn't have the one and only. I have uh, I have role models in different parts, you know? That, that's, uh, that's fine. That's a good answer. I think I'd be the same. You name Dorian, him Dorian yeah. Ye- Yates is a, is, it's a role model for me because he has a similar structure because a uh, grainy look and uh, not b- the best physique, but mass and grainy look. And it was his typical points and i'm a huge fan of flex lewis uh i loved his style when i was uh, young when i was 18 19 i saw the pictures from flex uh, and i i think so okay it's it's i, I wished i can see like flex and uh, yeah i'm a huge fan of uh, gunter schlierkamp because he even looks like so, su- so so fresh and like a sunny boy when <laughs> when a lot of guys go on stage they you 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 see the diet in the face and they looks like bad and tired and when Günther go, go on stage he has full hair he has a full round uh, uh, face and he looks so really good you know what I might what I mean <laughs> the opposite of Dorian Yates yeah yeah and uh, yeah Markus Ruhl also is a German guy it's a mass monster I I like him I, I'm a role model for me because he's a freak he's a bodybuilding freak and I'm a bodybuilding fan but uh, I never would like to look or never told to me I wished I can look like Marcus you know yeah. he's a freak and he's a bodybuilding freak but uh, he's not a bodybuilder uh, who I, I would like to look yeah yeah it's kind of funny yeah I, I get I get what you're saying there it's like everybody admires him but I, I don't know if we want to step on stage looking like that yeah he's such a freak uh, Jay Cutler is a role model he is a role model because he had not the, the best physique but he he is in Mr. Olympia and he get his best to stay as ch- a champion he, he, you know what I mean he, he, yeah. he do his best he had not the best genetic for the physique but uh, he represented his, uh, his his body perfect and he presented the sport the bodybuilding sport very very good good and he's a uh, very uh, beautiful and also uh, a nice guy good answer yeah i agree and joe i think joe admires uh i don't know how many people don't admire jay cutler's one way or another because he's such a good ambassador but i think joe he's up there on your list too eh? a role yeah. model in, in the workout is uh ronnie coleman <laughs> yeah when you, i do a heavy set i even hear in my ears yeah buddy you know yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to talk to you yeah. sometimes it's like yeah buddy or we say it. Yeah, yeah. I'm 10 years older than you, Tim, so I grew up with that stuff. It's funny, Joe and I were just talking about Lee Priest, because he was on the show. He came on last week, and we were just, I was like, was it weird for you to have Lee Priest on the show? And I was thinking, because it was weird for me, because it's like, you know, having someone I, I looked up to for many, many years, well, I, I mean, I never thought would come on, <laughs> and having Lee Priest on, it was just, um, it was an honor, um, but it just, it's just so, you know, I, I can't believe still to this day, I mean, came on to chat with us so it's like it's weird when you have your idols kind of there sitting talking to you it's different yeah no it's cool that was it was really cool having me on like i'd love to have on again um but yeah like because he was like probably the first bodybuilder i kind of like looked up to when i first like started working out as a teenager like first guy i saw in the magazines and everything and then you know after that i think it was like jay cutler was like well the one when i started competing that's the one i was like looking up to more and um you know i always liked yeah like guys like marcus rule and like the guys that were just freaks like that i always like i always loved that just like the the monster freak factor and then like you know ronnie coleman as well um and then yeah like more recently i like like obviously like phil heath but like more so not just the physique but just his mentality and everything i really like that yeah. like the mentality that he had and that's kind of like what i what i like most about him was uh his mentality you know like it was just like not too many guys i mean, shouldn't say not too many guys but not a lot of guys like have that like kind of like mentality especially when they have you know the genetics to match it which is pretty crazy because like there's other guys that have great genetics and bodybuilding but they kind of have like more of a lazy mentality around it they're not as like kind of like out there to kill like like phil heath was so you know that's probably why i kind of like looked up to him in that sense because it's like you gotta have that like killer mentality when you're going to you know going into shows yeah i, I love kevin lebron and it's funny because kevin lebron would always be like yeah when i go crap it's battle i put my knives around me like <laughs> <laughs> kevin lebron would then subsequent to that take half the year off and join a rock band and do whatever the fuck and lose all of the muscle and then come back so it begs the question like how in it was 
love Kevin, though, if he would take half the year off. Yeah, that's true. But I, I love, I, mean, I, I always loved the transformation from Kevin. It's you insane. saw pictures. He was very, very outside the sport, you know. And then you saw him uh, a couple months later, and he was so huge, you know. That was unbelievable. It, that that yeah. to me is unbelievable too. Yeah, like yeah. the '90s were such an era. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Thank you for. Yeah. Well, Tim, thanks for coming me. on. We yeah. Hey, you know what? Like um, after seeing you in Toronto, I, I you were the first guy up on that lineup that I said I we talked to him. I didn't ask you enough questions about your crazy conditioning, but I think I got it. Slow and steady wins the race, right? With you, and that's how you keep that conditioning. So good luck in Vancouver. Um, we'll be watching. I'm hoping you. You, uh, you know, I, I hope you clinch a, an Olympia spot this year, either Vancouver, Chicago. You know, go go work your ass off or whatever you're gonna do, or don't work your ass off and do light sets, heavy reps. I think is what you're saying is the plan, right? Just go do what you're gonna do, and you looked amazing in Toronto. So if you look anything as amazing, I, I'm I'm putting my money on you, Tim. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I, I appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll send you a T-shirt if you think. And I see you're wearing a pair of muscle T-shirts, and ours are, are much cooler. Ah, yeah. <laughs> T-shirts <laughs> always fine. I love. Yeah. T-shirts. Okay. Okay. I'll um message me with your address and stuff, and I'll send yeah, you. Yeah. Cool, man. A three XL over. Yeah, three or four. <laughs> three or four. Three or four. <laughs> He's getting expensive. You know, four XLs get expensive. <laughs> I'm, j- I'm joking. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Have See a good you night, guys. guys. Joe, thank you. You too. See you, Tim. Joe, thank you. See you on stage next time, Joe. Yeah, man. I'll see you up there next year. Ah, cool. Yeah, looking forward, man. Yeah, man. Good luck in Vancouver, though. I can't wait to see you up there. Thanks, bro. Bye-bye. And come back. Come back, Tim. We'll we'll come back after you win, okay? Okay, yeah. yeah, Definitely. (laughs) Good? Okay, we'll bring bring you back when you win. Um, Thank you, Tim. Thanks. All right. See you guys. Bye. Guys, like, subscribe to the channel, to Joe's channel, all our Instagram page. Big big deal, little Joe. So that's B-E-L-J podcast uh on our instagram okay thanks guys have a good night see you guys Bye. peace